So today we're in section 4.7, uh, writing equations in point slope form. And um, I know what you're thinking because the thought crossed my mind, like another formula, like, you know, what could there possibly be left, right? Well, we have another scenario with linear equations that we have to consider, okay? And point slope formula helps me get the equation yet again in slope intercept form given the information that I have, okay? And that'll make more sense in a minute. But you do need to know the point slope formula. It is on your quiz and your test next week. Okay, so in example one, we're gonna use point slope formula to write the equation. So one thing we see that is different about this scenario is that it only gives me one ordered pair, All right? So having only one ordered pair I need to um, look specifically at uh, point slope formula to kind of fill in my information, okay? All right, so here's my formula. And now I can use the numbers that I have that I'm given to substitute into the formula because it specifically says to write the equation in point slope form. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. So y is a part of my formula. I never plug in a number for y. Based on my ordered pair, which value is my y1? Okay, well, it's x1, y1, just like it's always been. So I still label my sequence the same way, so I know that my y1 value is 1. That's where I get the minus 1 from. The subtraction sign is in the formula. 1 was positive in the ordered pair, so it's minus 1 equals m, well, m stands for what in my equation? It stands for slope, so it tells me clearly that slope is what? Two-thirds. Two -thirds. So I plug in two-thirds for m. x is another part of the equation that's just automatically a part, so I just write my x. And according to my ordered pair, what was my x1 value? My x1 is negative 6, so when I subtract a negative 6, what happens? Positive. It's a positive 6, and there's my equation. Okay, so all I'm doing in point slope form, and you, you have this on your quiz and your test next week, is I'm plugging in the numbers, the values, where they go in the formula, and I only need one point to do it. Okay, so now I want you to do one. Okay, same thing. I give you one ordered pair. I give you the slope. Now just plug it into the formula. All right, so guys, let's go over this together. All right, so when I plug in, when I plug in the values, um, I get <clears throat> y minus what? Two. Two equals negative 4 times x minus 1, okay? Because it's y minus y1 that plugs in here, and then my m plugs in here, and my x1 plugs in at the end, okay? And that's my answer. It's a positive 1. Yeah, but it was subtraction in the formula. So my formula is x minus x1. Yeah, because, because it was a double negative. But when I plug in a positive number and there's already a subtraction sign there, it makes it subtraction. So if I had plugged in a negative number there, then yes, it would have become a positive. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and move on now to example two. In example two, actually a lot of this is familiar to you. Okay? Now, here's the information that we're missing from example one, like if I'm comparing. Does it just come out and say, uh, this is my slope, no. what your slope is? No. So you have to use the ordered pairs to find your slope. All right, so you're going to have problems on your homework tonight where all it gives you is ordered pairs and you use them to find slope. And we actually learned this in section 4.6. When I'm using a table, I can use... <coughs> back-to-back -back order pairs, the first and the second, or I could do the second and the third ordered pair, okay? But it has to be consecutive. You can't skip any. If you skip them, your slope will be wrong. 
All right, so um, we can pull out negative 1 and 10 and 2 and 4, and I want you to find slope. Go ahead and pull out those two ordered pairs and find your slope. Um, so I plug out, or plug, I pull out negative 1, 10, and 2, and 4, and now plug in those numbers into your slope formula to find slope. What is my slope formula? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right? That sequence, I still have students getting it wrong. If you don't have your sequence right, the x1, y1, x2, y2, to figure out where to plug it in the formula, you have no chance at getting the slope right. Okay? So make sure that you're plugging in the numbers where they go in the formula. Okay? So once we plug in our numbers, what did you get? You got negative 2, right? Negative 6 over 3 reduces to negative 2. This was another uh, mistake that I saw pop up quite often on the quiz yesterday, was that you forgot to reduce. Remember, you reduce, you never change to a mixed number, though. It can be a whole number, but it cannot be a mixed number. So now, in the past sections, now I go over and I look at my table for my y-intercept. But what do you see that's missing in my table to find my y-intercept? What's missing? Zero. A zero for x. You don't have any ordered pairs that have a zero for the x value. So you can't use that method. You have to use point slope to figure out your y-intercept. So point slope says I can choose any ordered pair. I only need one in the set. I can choose any of them, and I'm going to plug it into my formula. So I just chose the second one. All right, and don't forget your formula. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. I just picked the middle one just because I could pick one. It does not matter which one you pick. And now you plug in these values. You have an ordered pair, and you have the slope. So this now takes us back to example one. We're plugging in the values into point slope. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and plug in your values into point slope formula. All right, so y minus what? Four. Now you could have put 10 if you used a different order pair, but I kind of circled the one that we were all using. Don't erase it, okay? You'll, you still should end up with the same answer. Y minus 4 equals, what's my M? Guys, look up here. Look up here. What's my M? Negative 2 times X minus what? 2. Okay? 2 was positive, but there's a subtraction sign in the formula. Now you need to solve for Y. Here's why. Maya, please pay attention. It says to write the equation in slope-intercept form. So now I'm plugging these values into point slope so I can have a B value. That's the whole reason I'm doing that. Okay, so now you need to do distribute a property. On the right side of the equation, you have to get the X minus 2 out of the parentheses. There's only one way to do that, and that's by distributive property. Y minus 4 equals what's negative 2 times X? What's negative 2 times x? Negative, negative 2x. What's negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4. Positive 4. And now we have one more step to getting this totally in slope-intercept form. To get y by itself, what do I need to do to both sides? Add, Add 4. Add 4 to both sides. 4 plus 4 is? 8, so y equals negative 2x plus 8, all right? So the reason I had to do this last step down here is because I didn't have a 0 for my x value in my table. I couldn't just say, oh, well, that's my y-intercept. I had to use point-slope form to find my y-intercept and write my equation in slope-intercept form, okay? All right, so now you do one. I give you two ordered pairs, and I say write the equation in slope-intercept. Well, the first step you've already done. Use the ordered pairs to find slope. But the second step, where it was super easy in 4.6, I just look at the ordered pair and which one has zero. 
Well, in this case, do either ordered pair, does either ordered pair have a zero for x? No, so now I have to use point slope form to get to my b value and get the equation in slope intercept. All right, but the first thing we do is use the ordered pairs to find your slope. Go ahead and do that. All right, so guys, look up here, look up here. The first thing I do is find slope. I chose, um, all right, so I chose my values, negative four minus one over three minus negative two, which changes to a positive, and I got negative one. Now I come over here to my point slope um, equation. It does not matter which ordered pair you choose. I just chose the first one. So I put in y minus one, I subtracted y one equals m, which I just saw for negative one, times x minus, sorry, x one, which is a negative two. So that's why I got the double negative, which changes to a positive. And now I need to distribute this side. Negative one times x is what? Negative one x. Negative one times positive two is? Negative two. Now I need one more step to get this all the way in slope intercept. What do I need to do? Add one to both sides and I'm done. Okay. All right. Who got it? Who got it? Most of you guys got it. Good. All right. Just needed a little, you know, maybe just a little bit of help, but less help than the last time. So that's good. Okay. Last example is, you know, this like real life problem, basically. Um, it t it's a parasailing example. All right. So I'm parasailing. All right. Pay attention. Just froze for a sec. Okay, I'm parasailing. It says you finished parasailing and you're being pulled back to the boat. Has anybody ever been parasailing in here? Okay, so, but you know what parasailing is, right? All right, so you're being pulled behind a boat and you're up, you know, lie, really, really high up in the air and you can kind of see the whole island or the ocean or whatnot. Okay, so after two seconds of being reeled in, you are now 25 feet above the boat. At what height were you parasailing? Well, we need a little more information here. And it gives us a picture on page, uh, let's see, we're on page uh, 182. 182, go ahead and turn to page 182 in your books. We need to look at this picture. And it also gives you a visual of, you know, what this whole parasailing scenario looks like. Page 182, we need this picture. We need one other piece of information to be able to put this together. Okay, so the yellow arrow shows us that I'm dropping 10 feet per second. So here's my question. My question is, at what height were you parasailing in the first place? All right, so we can take this information. Two seconds, I'm 25 feet above. All right, and I can make it into an ordered pair. All right, and then my slope stands for my rate of change. So my rate at which I'm dropping is 10 feet per second. All right, that's my slope, all right? My slope always stands for my rate. So now I can put this in point slope and then I can write it in slope intercept form. I can solve for y. Go ahead. So you don't have to use two order pairs to find slope. It just tells you, all right? Now all you have to do is plug these numbers into your point slope equation and solve for y. All right, let's go ahead and work on that. Okay, so I, I wanna show you the formula, okay? So again, that's just my original formula. Now I make my substitutions. Did you substitute the numbers like that? y minus 25 equals negative 10 times x minus two. But now I need to get it in slope intercept form so I can see when zero seconds have passed, meaning I haven't been reeled in at all, what height was I at? Okay, so that I need to get my y-intercept value to be able to answer that question. So what's negative 10 times x? Negative 10, negative 10x. What's negative 10 times negative 2? 20. Positive 20. So now what do I do to both sides to solve for y? Add 25. Add 25. So here's what this means, guys. My y-intercept. 
Meaning, if there are, if there's no value for x, x is my time, my seconds. If I have not been reeled in at all, I'm 45 feet above. Right now, let's think about this practically. If you're dropping 10 feet per second, if you're dropping 10 feet per second, and you're 25 feet after two seconds, you can just add 20 to that to get 45 seconds. Or, I'm sorry, 45 feet. All right. So um, there's a couple different ways we can look at this, but this is how you would solve it if. Big hint, star this example if it were on your quiz on Monday. All right, and that's everything you need to know for section um, 4.7 and all of chapter 4.